Welcome back to the Sunday talk show here on the Arise News Channel. I am Ruben Abati. Now, before I let you go, uh, and then we we'll go to talk about the markets, uh, let me ask you, in the last week, you know, with all the things that have happened and all that, what is that thing on a lighter mood now, you know, um, that tickles you, that you find amusing, or that you find, you know, that extra other side of the news that you think Nigerians should also think about. <laughs> Let me start with uh, Bob D. Well, I think the biggest news before Buhari came, <laughs> came back was the royal Rumble. <laughs> Rumble <laughs> or Rumpus <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Between my own king, you know, the only of Ife, Oba Adeyeye Ogunwusi and his wife, Olorimura, the Aroli Odudua, yes. And uh, that went viral. And uh, I got caught up in the middle of it, and uh, we're only hoping that uh, they will settle. Uh, the elders of Ilife are coming together to make sure that uh, there is a lasting solution to whatever yeah, caused the, the problem. This whole thing, I, I, I thought I read the story too, it's about the uh, owner of FIFA uh, taking uh, an extra wife and the wife saying she doesn't want a partner, a rival in the palace. But you know, according to uh, African tradition, a king can take 50 wives. It's, it's part of the privilege of royalty. Okay, so I mean, why is the uh, queen? Why, why, doesn't, why doesn't she want to share, uh, you know, in line with African tradition? I, don't, I mean, I Yemi, don't if you respond to that, <laughs> women should be prepared to share. Yemi, Yemi will support polygamy. Excuse I'm me. I'm not privy to the facts of this. <laughs> That's not, not like a question. Lawyer. <laughs> but I'm just giving you the facts of the case. According as reported. to you, I'm just, as reported, I'm not privy to the facts. I shall not comment on <laughs> the issue at hand. Well, sir. Don't worry. The, uh, the, the chairman of Arise News is trying to get Uluri to come on. That's the social uh, of this brief. To come on to I want to watch that. Uh, I go to you. It's the social of this brief. In five seconds. What is that other part of the news that you like to I'd say probably continental. Um, the Kenyan elections. I was privileged to be there during the um, general elections in, on last week. And it was just interesting just watching another country. I mean, Rwanda just did a 98% return or crowning, as, hmm. as they called it on social media. Coronation. Coronation of their president. And then you had in Kenya, where you had two dynasties, in a sense, mm -hmm. Uhuru um, and the Odingas. Even Odingas. Mushoka is part of yeah. the... Odinga's father was leader of opposition, just as Uhuru's yeah. father was president. And seeing Raila try four times, and uh, at this age, then <laughs> tallying became an issue, issues we go through here. But it's just very interesting to see, and I'm, I'm very interested to see how Kenya would come out of this. Raila has agreed to go to court, so we'll see how that plays out. But so far, I mean, Kenya seems to have survived. Yes, uh, This is different from 2007, oh, when no, I mean, yeah, over 1,000 persons yeah, died. Yeah, and definitely. So that's a good, violence so across that's a good, the country. It's a good, it's a yeah. good thing. Wale, for me, two, two seconds. Two things, actually. First, the news that um, the former vice president had begun to speak to the PDP, I, I was expecting that. And I knew it was just a question of time. So I, mean, I like the sound of that. <laughs> so many as parents, yes. movie as parents, are already talking. The other to... one is the, the attack uh, on the acting president by the PDP, and that, which described him as figure. I thought that was uncalled for. Mm. The man had put in a lot. In fact, his best in the period that Buhari was away. So describing him as a figure, I thought it was, um, was based by the people. Well, and, and if he had done otherwise, then they would have said it was over. I think the general <laughs> consensus has been that Professor Yemi Oshimbajo did well. has shown great uh, loyalty, mm. discipline, decorum, enthusiasm, commitment, and you could see that when wow. the president returned uh, on Saturday, uh, he yeah. held his hand, yeah. you know, and that was a very powerful yeah. picture, oh, yeah, uh, which made the headlines in many of our yes. newspapers. Well, we'll go on a short break again, but stay tuned. When we return, we'll then discuss the markets this week with Priska Ndo. Welcome back to the Sunday talk show here on the Arise News Channel. I am Ruben Abati. Time now for us to take a look at how the global markets closed last week. And we'll begin here in Nigeria. Joining me to discuss this subject is Priska Ndo, a leading African business expert whose day job is as a senior executive at Amcon. And she's also 
a board member of the Harvard Alumni Association in Nigeria. Priska, good to see you again. Welcome. Thank you. Now, Priska, can you assess uh, what happened in the Nigerian economy in the last week? What are the key things to look out for? For the week under review, uh, we saw that uh, the oil price was stable at about $51 per barrel. The stock market lost about 6%. And um, we've seen a spike in equities. But when you look at what is driving, what the driving factor is, you don't see a reasonable gain in their earnings to justify that spike, so which gives us cause to worry. Uh, but globally, um, we saw a lot of activities in um, the equities market. In Kenya, the shilling traded about 103.25 to the dollar. And uh, also in South Africa, we saw the, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange closed in the red yet again. You know, so in the African markets in general, we've seen a lot of uh, decline in, in the stock market. And one is beginning to look at other opportunities that may exist for investors, like uh, mutual funds. We have the Real Estate Investment Trust. We also have uh, the exchange traded funds. So these are other opportunities that one can begin to look at in order to diversify our risk. Yeah, but you talked about the global capital market. Now, in your own estimation, who were the uh, winners and the uh, big losers and why? Well, some of the key winners we had for, for last week, like, like I said, um, South Africa was one of the major losers. It also closed um, in red. In Europe, the stocks also fell sharply. Uh, we had um, the Nigerian market up by 0.6%. Wasn't really bad, but at least we didn't lose. So typically, these are the markets that um, we're hoping will pick up this week. And also, uh, a gold jumped to its highest in more than nine months. So that's also another good avenue for investors to, so to in look at. So in specific terms, what are the trends we should look out for next week, or this week, so to speak? Well, some of the major global trends um, that we should look out for, like we've seen uh, most countries are moving away from fossil fuels because, like we know, it's not sustainable. Um, the UK has already set um, a, a benchmark for uh, facing out all the uh, gas-powered Cars yeah, to go long term projections. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's based. important it's important for Nigeria to begin to key into that. Uh, I hope it will not be in our usual habit to wait until last minute to begin to do something about that. Well, coming back home, uh, Dangote, the Dangote Group has announced a shift in investment from Africa to Europe to rebalance its portfolio. In fact, the uh, President of the Dangote Group is even talking about his future plans for Asana and, you know, making that part of his portfolio. What's your take? As a sound entrepreneur, it's important to have an actively diversified portfolio because especially looking at all the uncertainties in the African markets, Europe market has been stable, as we can see. Uh, it's easier to project, it's uh, also easier to, uh, to plan unlike uh, what we've seen in our Nigerian markets. So there's nothing wrong in him deciding to diversify his portfolio. And also, given the challenges we've had with uh, foreign exchange in recent times, and the fact that most um, entrepreneurs and uh, manufacturers depend a lot on foreign exchange to be able to fund their businesses, it's important to have a large pool, a large source of foreign exchange to be able to buffer the demands locally. Well, for his businesses. One of the issues in the Nigerian economy uh, causing a lot of anxiety and uncertainty has been recession. Now, some government officials say, oh, we, we manage recession very well. The critics of government say, look, this recession is likely to go on for at least another year. And there is, the prospects are discouraging. What do you think? I think looking at how well we've performed, I mean, the next week we're looking, we're, we're, we're all anxious to see what the inflation rate data will be and also the GDP data. Uh, I want to say that um, we've, 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 we've not done very badly. We've not done very badly. We're inching closer to, uh, to the positives. And uh, analysts have uh, projected that 
towards the end of the third quarter and the last quarter of the year, we'll see a remarkable uh, improvement in our, 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 our performance so far for this year. Well, so I don't think it's as bad as, yes, uh, we, we may have uh, gradually inched out of recession, but uh, caution uh, should still be exercised in our budgeting for the rest of the year. Yeah, the analysts and economists, you know, they quote these figures, they, they're optimistic. Um, but the ordinary man in Nigeria says that's not a reality and that there's a gap between the figures and what they actually see in the, uh, in the basic market, you know, not your market now, but the market that the ordinary man goes to. I agree with you, especially when you know that um, the inflation rate affects um, uh, the, the consumer purchase parity and also his ability to be able to purchase goods at reasonable prices. If he's not earning much, how much can he then afford to pay for goods? Because goods have gone up. Uh, the typical employee is, uh, whose earning, earnings have not gone up, but his disposable income is less, will suffer the crunch. So in as much as the figures uh, might not be easily relatable, to the common man, what he wants to see is that money in his pocket can meet his everyday needs. But will you say that uh, there is confidence in the Nigerian economy, particularly with the capital flight we witnessed uh, earlier in the year? Well, uh, what I would want to say is for us as a country, it's important to stay away from uh, very volatile investments that come in as uh, portfolio investments. It's easier to focus more on long-term and stable investments as opposed to uh, the quick flow that comes in and then can get out again. So we should diversify our investments to rely more on long-term stable funds. Quite correct. Well, thank you very much, uh, Priska. You've been watching This Day Live Sunday talk show here on Arise News. I'm Ruben Abati in Nigeria's commercial capital, Lagos. From all of us here, at Arise News is bye for now and thank you very much for watching.